Morning. We're ready to drink some beer and talk some shit with Todd Holman and, and all of our friends. It's a joyous occasion, as always, in this age of the Roan. Hello, Joel. There's, there's a Todd. Give me just a second. Boop. Hey gang, Todd is incoming, I think, yeah, he's over there just connecting, what's up gang, hey, what's happening, well, I saw that uh, Talib Kweli just started a live video as well, and I think I'm going to request to be on his, that's fine if you want to go to one that nobody else is going to go to, <laughs> No, come on. I wouldn't do that to you. Thank you. The the Maddings have joined. Hello, Maddings. Yeah, dude, you got to have your uh, quarantine hat on. Yeah. I sure as hell hope you have yours. I hope you got a quarantine hat. I hope you got plenty of booze to drink. Yep. I got my beer. I got my, uh, got some, drinking some Della Barnes. Some of the, the last of the cans, and I've got a little uh, little side of J.W. Dant here. Yeah, I, I drank all my Dant. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I am down to the drag. Run. Hey, my wife just put a quarantine hat on. She's getting in the spirit. Let's see it. Come here, babe. That is delightful. There we go. God bless. I mean, remember it. Only, it only protects you indoors, not outdoors. No, oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's got wacky feet going. There we go. He's back. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm drinking uh, Dry Ground Brewery's Leonard the beer. Now available. It's good. We we changed the uh, the brewing method on that. Same recipe, just changed the changed the way we brewed it. And I think it's I think it's delicious. It's delightful, is what it is. We're hoppy right now, which is I'm good with that. Yeah, I like them hops. Yep. Everybody doing okay right now with your uh, respective nightmares you're living in? My my basic sleep routine is nightmare, wake up, go back to sleep, nightmare, wake up, go back to sleep, then just make coffee and stay up. Right, right. Adam Wallace is joined all the way from Washington, D.C. Hello. Hello, Adam. Adam, Adam, uh, we did earlier about how uh, we're getting ready to go to war with the state of Tennessee. And Adam said he was he would come back. He would come back to Kentucky for that fight. It's because he's a great American. Yeah, great, great Kentuckian. He he's he's here for the Commonwealth over anything. But Bashir laid down the law. He said, "Don't go to Tennessee. Those people are stupid." In so many words. Yeah, you know, let's be honest, Corey. You and I have been saying that for years. Yeah, I mean, I'm I focus. Most of my animosity towards towards Southern Illinois because it's you know three miles away and it's deserved. I mean, let's be honest. The people in Southern Illinois will tell you the same. But but you know Tennessee is. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot Joel is a Joel is a Tennessean. Joel, you're honorary Kentucky. <laughs> Joel, we'll spare you. We're not coming after you. Yeah. We'll sneak oh. in on the uh, Tennessee to Kentucky Underground Railroad. Damn right. Todd, you're all pixely. I am? Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Whatever works. Yep. Hey, Layton, how you doing, man? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to talk about a myriad of subjects yet again. <laughs> Good, because I don't have anything to talk about. Do you not? Well, the only, the, the only uh, advice I have tonight is uh, just 
I don't know, listen to Steely Dan. <laughs> there you go. Adam said he'd, he'd rather lay, lay waste to uh, Indiana, <laughs> or was that a typo? I'm, I'm, I'm sure our <laughs> – I'm sure our friends uh, there in the Kentucky Beer Network will agree as they're in uh, Louisville. <laughs> Hello, Leia. Leia's doing the Lord's work every day, too. Absolutely. Uh, here's, a, here's an interesting geography question, Corey. Um, you know, not that, not that Kentucky's the greatest or anything. You know, we, we got our problems, let's be honest. But... Is there any state that borders Kentucky that doesn't suck? No. There you have it, folks. Science, geography. I, I, do, I do not have uh, any more to add to that because it is, it is no. Indiana is not Louisville, says he. I mean, I don't, are, do, do people debate that? Is, do people think that Louisville's part of Indiana? Really? I mean, there's there's a little smidgen of, of – it, it gets a little Indianish every now and again, just like Paducah gets a little Southern Illinois-ish every now and again because those people just – there's no, there's no control. And I, this is where I, I will agree with uh, Trump. You know, we need to we need to have some, uh, some border, border protection with our friends to the north. And now to the south. Yes. Austin says maybe the people hit all those t uh, toll booths on accident. <laughs> that is a nightmare. Don't get anywhere near the river in Louisville or you will end up uh, crossing some toll booth and getting fined. <laughs> Today our governor talked about a border with Tennessee. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. Adam calls it metropolish. <laughs> Things are getting mighty metropolish around here. <laughs> I guess it's better than Joppish. Or Brookportish. Oh, dear Lord. Brookport's going to turn around once they get all those, uh, those uh, marijuana dispensaries going, though. Now turn it around for them. Yep. <laughs> when those dispensaries get destroyed by a tornado in about six weeks, they will they will rebuild. <laughs> uh, what else is going on, man? I don't know. You got any records to share tonight or anything? Did you exhaust your uh uh no I'm taking a break from the records, uh just like I said. Steely Dan, you'll be fine. But I do have a movie recommendation. Okay, good. Because I'm going to be honest. Your last uh, record roundup gave me yeah. It, it gave me whatever the opposite of night terrors is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have cats. Oh, we definitely do. Because Footfoot is right here. Oh, look at that! She, look at that heavenly creature. She's not happy about that. Yeah. All right. Tonight I have a movie recommendation. Get it at us. For when you're quarantined because of the coronavirus. Don't know if you've heard of this or not. It's called Legends of the Fall. I've seen it very recently. I saw it. Uh, I, I watched that probably three or four weeks ago. It's a passionate journey into the darkest secrets of love, betrayal, and the unbreakable bonds of blood. Now, if you say that twice in a row, you got 20 seconds. You can repeat that to yourself when you're washing your hands. Well, let's let, let's be real. The unshakable bond of blood doesn't really apply in that movie because it's three brothers, and they all are banging the same chick. You know, I uh, <clears throat> I saw that in the theater when it first came out. I haven't seen it since, and I don't remember a thing about it. The only thing I remember is I think it kind of has the same storyline as Elvis Presley's Love Me Tender, except this one has a bear in it. There's definitely a bear. And uh, yeah. th there is a, a brief, uh, portion where they're in World War I, and uh, there's a pretty great scene where, where there's a, some kind of bomb falling, whatever, whatever happens in World War I, but a, a horse-drawn wagon drives by and explodes. Ooh! 
yeah, it's an empty wagon. It has no munitions or anything on it. It's just it just explodes, and I giggled my little heart out. It just blows up. Mm-hmm. Well, Corey, I don't know if you know this or not, but there was a big problem back in World War I days of uh, wagons spontaneously combusting. Oh, was, was that the problem with World War I? Started the whole goddamn thing. It, it did. For, for, it, was, for, it, was a, it, it was a wagon that spontaneously combusted and killed Archduke Ferdinand. There we go. Joel, Joel said that movie made him consider suicide. It's horrible and depressing. I like it. <laughs> I, 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 I enjoy the movie. I, I think it's un, I think it's unfairly gets uh, labeled as a chick flick because uh, because Brad Pitt is super hot in it. He's he's super hot and very uh, very without a shirt in a lot of the movie, if I remember correctly. Uh, another another Louisville there. Chris just joined. Uh, He's a little behind. What are, I, I guess he's asking if we're talking about Air Bud. <laughs> he's either asking or recommending, or I don't. I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, Air Bud, Legends of the Fall, similar. No, well, I mean they're both tear jerkers. Yeah. Jerking something. Uh, the cool thing about this DVD edition of Legends of the Fall, though, is. Uh, an audio commentary by production designer Lily Kilvert. I've, I've been waiting. You know, most movies they get the director or the stars to do the audio commentary. Not Legends of the Fall. They got the production designer <laughs> to talk about the movie for two and a half hours. Yeah, I, I did not listen to that when I watched it the other day. Adam Adam says there's no rule that says a horse can't explode. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to disagree, and that, and that leads me to a, a, uh, another subject. Like, I mean, the way the way things are changing every day, they're changing, you know, rules and things you're supposed to do. I, I haven't seen anything about about how we're supposed to treat our horses, but I, I am confused as to why we're supposed to feed ducks bread now. Because I was always told, don't do that. Yeah, that's a, it's, it's a bad thing. Yeah, you can, who is who is advocating giving bread to ducks? I think it was Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Sounds about right. Chris, Chris won't let this Air Bud thing go. Okay, yeah, Air Bud's wonderful, but didn't they? Is it true they may, they had to amputate that dog's legs because of the sneakers they had to put on it? I heard that. Is that what they did? Did they did they amputate the legs and then attach the sneakers surgically? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they they pre. I'm not because that would be fucked up. They they did not pre amputate. Uh, I, I don't. Okay. Always always heard they had to amputate after the fact because the, the sneakers fucked his legs up. <laughs> Which I, well. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because, like, Milo and Otis, like, don't ever read the Wikipedia of Milo and Otis because they tortured some goddamn animals. Hey, uh, you know, I mean, it's just something It's just something that happens in the movie business. Uh, Tom Cruise had his legs amputated 15 years ago. Yeah, but he's got Scientology powers. He does. He's also got, uh, he's got uh, anatomically, uh, a- and a, and I don't know what the word I'm trying to say is. He's uh, once you animatronic. He's got animatronic legs. I mean, once you reach OT level five, you can levitate. <laughs> oh no! Who man, that boy, that boy has got some thetans. Let me tell you, he's ate up with them. Chris says they had to amputate that dog's head. <laughs> That's even more disconcerting. I don't think they went quite that far. Right. We got we got Cam joining us from Louisville. We got a Louisville ass uh, uh, group tonight. Hey Cam, God bless you. What's up, Cam? By the way, my wife also says hi, Cam. He has nothing to say. I, I bet Cam has a lot of opinions on uh, on Air Bud. 
And Legends of the Fall. Yeah. Which is weird. Like, there's there's a lot of uh, powers you get from Scientology, and I, I would assume, you know, at, at some OT, at a certain OT level, it, it makes you invulnerable to the Rhone. Has a Scientologist come down with the Rhone yet? Not that I've heard of. Beck is fine. Cruz is fine. Um, Kirstie Alley, doing good. She's not. She's been on Twitter spouting some nonsense. But she ain't got the Rona. Yeah, she's good. Uh, Travolta, as far as I know, is fine. It's, it's, I, mean, I mean, point proven. I will join today. But you gotta, I mean, you gotta reach like OT level four, which costs like four hundred thousand dollars. Well, I mean, it's not that much different from what it costs to get tested for the corona. So, and then I mean OT, but I mean it's worth the money because OT level six, you you can read a cat's thoughts. <laughs> oh man, tell you what. You're making one hell of a pitch for joining Scientology there, buddy. Yeah, you live. Yes, Foot Foot is in the fr frame, Chris. I, I kind of changed the angle tonight because that's where she, she tends to hang. Adam Adam wants to know if G Giovanna, G Giovanni Rabisi is okay. I don't think he's been okay since he made that other sister movie with uh, Juliette Lewis. I, I have not seen a, a lick of Giovanni in a long time, and you know what? I haven't missed him. But, oh, here's we, – we did – Hey, Tommy joined. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. <laughs> we did talk – I'm sorry, that was tacky. We did talk last time about, uh, you know, people wondering about, you know, how people are doing – uh, during this time, our, and by that I mean our betters, the celebs, and and, and rockers, and what have you. And um, we ended up, I think Preston Corn uh, suggested Bob Dole, which uh, <laughs> yes, which, which we there there. It took us a while to figure out that Bob Dole is actually alive, but I, I found some recent pictures I'd like to share. Please do. He's looking great. Oh, wow. Speaking of animatronic. It looks like someone tried to make a wax statue of Prince Philip. Well, he, he's fine. Here, here he is hanging with friends. Oh, hey, look at that. I wonder who they voted for. That's like... It looks like weekend at Bernie's retirement home. But it, but it's like the it's the opposite of weekend at Bernie's. It's everybody everybody's dead except for one guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I've got some more. I got I got I got to flitter through this because I mean there's some wonderful photos. Looking looking great there. Man, how high up are those pants? I'm about to say a mighty waistland waistline on that man. Well, I mean, it's like his waistline is like just a inch or two below his nipples. Well, yeah, I mean, it's you reach that age and your nipples start doing things. I mean, it it it's almost like his legs start right beneath his chest. Well, here here's here's probably my favorite. So he he has to he's got a guy who holds him up when he needs. <laughs> when he when he when he when he needs to stand, or uh, uh, you know, if he's at a, a military function and needs to stand, he's got the, I guess that got that bug-eyed meth addict on the right there, that meathead has to. So, <laughs> which, yeah, which immediately made me think of Martin Short's character in Arrested Development. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect was was based on I think that was based on on Bob Dole. Yes. <laughs> and here's here's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Just, he's just having him 
It looks like the seat belt is like cutting him in two. <laughs> Just having him some popped corn on the airplanes. Yeah. Who? I'm trying to figure out how like it's anatomically possible for the seat belt to go like two inches beneath your own belt. There, there's a diaper in there. Oh yeah. God bless that man. He's still rocking a nice tie though. He's doing he's doing terrific. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Here oh, here's another good one. The Prez giving him a little kiss. <laughs> That'd be like kissing beef turkey. Oh man. I'm I'm just glad his, his body caught up with the the rest of his body caught up with his hand. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> He's doing terrific. Hashtag living my best life. Yeah. Also, uh, in other news, I know I know you knew about this, Todd, but I got, I got blocked by Mike Huckabee on Twitter. I tell you, you've been on a tear getting blocked by everybody. Yeah. It's, it's going great. I'm, I'm proud of you. By the way, go back to that uh, Bob Dole popcorn picture again real quick. Love to. Love to. I have a question. <laughs> so <laughs> does the guy that holds him up in public feed him the popcorn? Is that also part of his job description? <laughs> See, here's the sad thing, the, like what's happening with our seniors. They, they, get, they get a nice uh, beefy helper like that. And wouldn't you know it, look at him. He, you can tell he steals some of that popcorn. Hey, you know, it's a, it's just a shame that Bob Dole is not a Scientologist, or he had, like you said, he, he could just levitate around everywhere. He wouldn't need people to hold him up. Bob Dole calls it fluffed kernels. That's what he was led, that's what he called it as a, as, as a young man. He calls it a little bit of the popped corn. The, po the, the popped corn. Just, yes. Oh my God, he's touching the hand too. Oh well. Mm. But anyway, the uh, it's really it's really easy to get blocked by Mike Huckabee. You just gotta keep bringing up the fact that his uh, large idiot son killed a dog at summer camp one year. Yep, sure did. True fact. He totally did. Like hung it by its neck. He's a detestable piece of shit. Yeah, we, I mean, which is what it's, it's a thing serial killers do. Yeah, and then I don't know which one it is, but look at the, <laughs> the Huckabee family photo. It's a, I believe I believe that it is the one uh, in the back in the center, right between Mike and his wife. And ironically, there's a dog that's still alive in that picture. Oh, they protect that dog with their lives. Dear Lord, look at those shirts. I'm sorry, this, my, my my floating head is, is cutting out Sarah Huckabee, but I don't think anybody really... Yeah. You know, I'm not, one, I'm not one to fat shame, but Jesus fucking Christ, people. I mean, everybody knows if you are large, don't wear fucking vertical stripes like that. Jesus Christ, the fuck? And don't tuck. And you know what else? Don't murder fucking dogs, you pieces of shit. Yeah, if you are a if you are a Huckabee, stop. The bad thing is, wait, Chris said it's actually the one wearing red. Oh, it was the. <laughs> actually, I hate that it's blocking it out because Sarah's uh, in a in a matching outfit with her mom. Oh, is she in that picture too? Oh yeah, my my large skull is blocking her. I mean, you say that dog's okay. That woman is choking that dog out. She is strangling that dog. Obviously. <laughs> Hold on, we got we got a question down here in the old question box. Oh, Adam wants to know. He missed the can check. He wanted to know what we're what we're drinking. I'm drinking a uh, ah, drinking Del Del Barnes, dry ground. and uh, I was drinking Leonard the beer. From dry ground, it is empty now. And I think I'm, I'm sipping on a little little burb as well. 
Yeah. Yeah, we should just bring that back there. Yeah, that dog is not safe. There, there is, uh, you know, the, the, one, the one thing that uh, gives me hope is looking at that picture, I see that uh, Mike Huckabee's large sons bear a uh, striking resemblance to Kenny Rogers' large sons. And Kenny Rogers' large sons, as we've talked about, just ate him not too long ago. So eventually, Mike will be devoured by his large sons. As, as much as I hate Mike Huckabee and his large, large children, the Kenny Rogers large sons, twin sons, at that are next level. Uh, luckily, I have a pick. There they are. Yeah. I mean, and they're, they're teens, massive, uh, unibrow in check. They, def they definitely ate Kenny. Oh, yeah, they did. They had, to, if they had like, one of those, uh, some kind of, like, uh, midsummer-like uh, ceremony <laughs> where they, they got dressed in white <laughs> and, and beat Kenny <laughs> until he was down and then began the feast of midsummer. Yeah, but, I mean, it was, it was a mercy because they knew what was coming. They knew the Rhone was coming. Oh, they did him a favor. I, I, I didn't. I didn't say their intent was ill. Yeah. Look at that man. I mean, the Austin says there should be a large sun showdown between the, the the Rogers, the Huckabees, and the Cages. Yeah, Nick Cage also has a large sun. He has a large goth son. <laughs> What's his name? I can't remember. It's something like. It's not Kal El, is it? Because he has a son named Kal El. It's not. It's not Kal El. It's uh, Kal M. No, I can't remember what his friggin' name is. Kal L M N O P. Get him. <laughs> oh. I mean the the Rogers twins. They've still got time to mature and grow, though. So. There's no way, because Nick Cage's goth son, he's a full-on adult. Yeah, and and uh, Kenny Rogers' large sons, uh, they have uh, they have ingested Kenny's essence and spirit, so they are even more powerful now. Chris says, "Caster Troy is is that is is that the large goth son's actual name?" You know, I wouldn't put it past Cage to name his son after a character he played in a movie. I mean, after all, he almost played Kyle L, and he's got a kid named that. Well, he's a big Superman fan. West. Yeah. Adam. Adam is correct. It's it's Weston. Kitty. I'm gonna go ahead and say like Weston is the worst name for a goth. <laughs> Weston the goth. <laughs> That's like a goth being named Hunter. <laughs> oh. Michaela, the goth. Ma Caitlin, the goth. See, you can kind of see Sarah. Sorry, the, the picture is very small, but you can kind of see Sarah up there. Ugh. All I know is that dog is not safe. No animal is safe around the Huckabees. So, uh, I got somebody else we could talk about. Yeah. He's, he's very much in the news uh, twice this week for, for varying uh, nefarious reasons. Oh, my God. I would, I would ask what people think old Jeremy Renner's up to during, during the uh, pandemic, but we know because we do. Number one, he's well. That didn't work out, but he. Uh, but, but still, that that face is like I, I don't even, I don't. I wouldn't even punch it. I would just. I don't. I'd have to friggin' do a, a flying dragon kick on that shit. But uh, that that headline actually says uh, Jeremy Renner is. Uh, He's upset about this whole Rhone virus, y'all, and he uh, 
he he wants his uh, child support to be lowered because of it. <laughs> oh man, I don't know what's worse, that or his album. Oh yeah, he also uh, oh he dropped a new album today too. It's a new one. You know, you know what it's called? You can't see it, but hold on, I'll. I'll it's called was it, it's it's called the medicine. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole! What an asshole! God, what a fucking douchebag! The the celebs need to have a uh, Twitter needs to block every celebs feed right now. You know because the, that's the, that's the one thing about this fucking pandemic. The <laughs> heaven don't have a name. That that was also he 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 protested having to pay child support by uh, sitting in a car with the uh, in the garage while I was running. Oh man, I, you know, first of all, he, that, that that fucking song title doesn't even make sense. Heaven don't have a name. Yeah, it does, asshole. It's heaven. It's in the fucking title. Some of you, some of you may actually be tempted to listen to uh, Jeremy Renner's music, and I implore you to not. No, but, I, I mean, for that matter, I, I implore you to not watch the films. I, Jeremy Renner, if he's going to use a global pandemic as an excuse to lower his child support payments, I guarantee you he's used everything. He probably was like, hey, you know, um, my character wasn't in uh, uh, Infinity War, so uh, my child support payment should be lowered. No, it's true. And, I mean, I looked it up. He's worth... Fifty million dollars. Fifty million. Yeah. I mean, fifty million for playing Hawkeye, being being in the Hurt Locker, and making the worst born movie film. He, he he's the worst part of every movie he's in for sure. It's just. Fucking sucks. I wish I wish that Endgame would have opened up with him just vanishing with everyone else. His whole family did. The end of Endgame, like everybody's back. Every they're, they're like, "Where's Hawkeye?" And and they they see, they see a fluttering pile of moss. Like, oh, it, it looks that looks hawkish. And then, <laughs> you know, it does put that opening scene to uh, Endgame in perspective, though. I guarantee you. It makes me think that Hawkeye, when he saw his children vanish, he was like, oh, thank God, I don't have to pay any money for those fuckers anymore. I mean, he made enough money off of uh, hands on Gretel, Gretel witch hunters to pay for his children forever. Everybody, I, everybody I, that fine film. But hey, he's given us the medicine. Yeah. Hey, Paul, you're in L.A. We're, we're going to need you to do something. Go kick Jeremy Renner's ass. Please? Also, uh, I'm, sure, I'll, I'll, I'm sure it'd be easy to do. Yeah, he's a twat. Also looked up, like, uh, what Jeremy Renner's upcoming movie slate is. It's all, like, Hawkeye, except for uh, an upcoming film called Doc, which it, wherein he plays Doc Holliday. No, no, yeah, no, no. He's got the goods. Paul, Paul. All right, now I just want to see Val Kilmer kick Jeremy Renner's ass. He could. Val Kilmer's very large too. Uh, Paul says he's got this. He says, "Dude, kids like five two. <laughs> I knew he was wee. I knew he was a wee little fellow. <laughs> And and of course we all remember you know not only do we do we have the wonderful uh, music and the new album make make sure you go out and uh, purchase that today because all proceeds go to his child support. Um, they probably go to the lawyer who's trying to get him out of the child support. This is true, and of course we all remember the Jeremy Renner app, <laughs> which was goddamn awful. <sighs> that was like a beautiful moment for America, though, because Americans like joined together to 
troll the fuck out of that app, which was pretty much like Instagram, but it was all pictures of Jeremy Renner. It's like just saying, hope you have a rocking weekend. <laughs> I, I mean, I've I've rarely seen the country come together like it did when uh, that app came out. The only thing that comes close to it was everybody dunking on uh, Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey today, which was also a beautiful thing. That was good. Austin's upset that the uh, the uh, it, it appears to be too photoshopped. Well, yeah, I mean, look at that uh, the picture on the far left there, where he's got his arms crossed and he's just like. Hmm. I, I, I get it, but I'm. Uh, I'm just. I, I have an. I have an app. It's not a big deal. I have other concerns oh, <laughs> beside him being photoshopped. <laughs> and so uh, well, look at his tiny head. His head looks like it's two sizes too small for his body in that picture. Basically, about all we're saying is go rush out by. Heaven don't have no damn name. Buy his new album. New album was dropped today called The Medicine. The Medicine. I tell you, Pearl Jam dropped a new album today. Nine Inch Nails dropped two new albums today. Waxahachie dropped a new album today. Fuck them. Get The Medicine by Jeremy Renner. I, I guarantee he had another working title for that album, and he's like, no. You, you know what people need right now? They need The Medicine. It was originally going to be called Love Light. <laughs> Just look at him. What a piece of shit. Fuck Jeremy. He, he's seriously the worst part of every movie he's in. I mean, the thing is, there's no reason for him to... He's such a douchebag. Uh, Disney and Marvel should fire him. I mean, we're talking about fucking comic book movies. They could put, some, they could put fucking Michael Shannon or somebody in there. Leave Michael Shannon be. Let him make good movies. Yeah, that's true. I don't want to wish that on him. But they could put somebody better in there to be Hawkeye and just be like, you know, oh, well, you know, it, this is this is comic book world. He decided to change his face. Exactly. Robert Zadar is not doing anything. Uh, <laughs> Robert Z isn't Robert Zadar dead? Is he? Maniac Cop, is that who you're talking about? Robert Zadar with the, the biggest chin in America. He passed away a couple of years ago. Are you serious? I'm damn serious. Did he donate his chin to science? <laughs> God, I hope so. That, 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 that fucking chin should be studied by scientists until the end of days. You know what? Look, I would rather look at the terrible Huckabee family photo than Jeremy Renner's smug, awful face. Adam Adam confirms he's dead. Well, Adam, last week you said Bob Dole was dead. We found out. <laughs> that ain't well, maybe he meant inside. He's alive and well. Look at that. He's looking terrific. Happy as a clam. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we'll, we're we're doing great. Yeah. I, I love this party pick; is one of my favorites. So, uh, yeah, as always, if you guys have any uh, questions, comments, subjects you guys want to uh, chuck at us, please, please do. Yeah, please do. We're just happy to be here. Happy to be hanging out with you guys. It's just good to be with a bunch of other creatives. <sighs> I mean, the whole, the whole purpose, Todd and I are trying to, uh, to metamorphize. For, you know, creative is the, the pupil stage of an influencer. Well, yeah, because, I mean, when, uh, when this whole thing started, people – People were tweeting and on you know on the social media talking about use this time to create. Okay, fine, I will. We are, we are. What are you talking about? Look at this. This is, this is what we're doing. Uh, Rebecca asks if we've seen Tiger King yet. Uh, she needs commentary. I've not seen Tiger King. Not yet. I know. Every, it, it's one of those things where. 
so many people are watching it right now. I almost don't want to watch it. I'm, I'm sure it's delightful. Um, yeah, give me your damn Netflix password and I'll watch it. I ain't paying for that shit. <laughs> no, I'm gonna watch it. It it sounds way too fuck it. it. Sounds like it's right in my wheelhouse. I mean, it's uh, it's white trash, tigers and meth. It's got it's got cats, which we're both into. Absolutely. Just get off our case, Rebecca. By the way, I think number one, number one on my watch list right now is Danzig's Veronica. Yeah, we talked about that the other night. It's, it's going to be well. Yeah. We're going to have a watch party. Yeah. By the way, Rebecca's uh, got a uh, GoFundMe up for uh, for Maiden Alley. Rebecca's the new uh, uh, executive director over there at Maiden Alley. And uh, somehow she became the, the first executive director in the history of nonprofits to uh, get get the business closed within the first week. No, no, she she inherited a shit show and uh, walked, uh-huh. walked into a shit show. I mean, to be fair, she's hardly the worst director they've had. But beyond that, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, second week. Hey, uh, uh, there is a GoFundMe up. I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could just go to GoFundMe and uh, search Maiden Alley. Right, surely. Yeah, she's got a. I'm sure there's a. There's a. You can follow uh, Maiden Alley on uh, right here on the Instagram. I'm sure there's a link there, and uh, but yeah, uh, we're trying to raise some money. I mean, you know, obviously uh, had to had to shut things down while everything else is shut down. You know, but we need to keep it going. Rebecca's doing a great job, and so if you can find that GoFundMe, throw some money at him. Yeah. And uh, half of the money is going to Family Service Society here in Paducah. So you're helping Maiden Alley stay open, and you're helping uh, people get food and clothes and stuff that they need like that. Yep. And, uh, and I mean, 4% of it goes to keep Bob Dole alive, too. He is a national treasure. <laughs> that makes him happy. No, just go to the go – the- <laughs> Go to the Maiden Alley uh, social media sites and you'll find it. God bless us. And it's also in Rebecca's profile, she said. So, And if uh, if they reach the goal, Rebecca's going to dye her hair a color that people vote on. I disagree. But I'm, I'm sure there's there's plenty of stuff you guys could be throwing your money at. Of course, when we get those twelve hundred dollar checks, ten percent does need to go to quarantine hats. But uh, you know, especially everybody that's on unemployment right now, y'all are getting ready to make more money than anybody I know. So, Chuck. So many so many wonderful things. I I did see the uh, the, the stimulus package that got passed there's there's something in it for musicians too so that's that's amazing because I, I we we have several friends who are working musicians and that's a freaking nightmare for for them to, for this this whole situation is there's absolutely nothing for them so uh i mean uh musicians uh comedians um even actors i got a i have a bunch of friends who work in uh theater in new york city and uh you know they're they're not doing anything. I mean, these are these are like people who work in sound and who build sets and do you know all this stuff. They're well, I mean, they're not working right now. Right. I don't care about theater people, but um, they're definitely the. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bunch of pranking. <laughs> <clears throat> there we go. That that's better than Bob Dole is. Pick of some kind of brown slop being emptied in. <laughs> Look at that! Don't want to make your is that too hungry now? But wait under underneath the bowl is that is that a ring of tortilla chips or is that just like a bunch of napkins that are? 
<laughs> what is that? I mean, presentation's everything. I'm sorry. There we go. Speaking of, speaking of brown shit. I would imagine that uh, brown slop you just had up there, I, I would imagine that's what it tastes like to kiss Bob Dole. That's gross, Todd. Here, let's get <laughs> There we go. That's much. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Now everybody's happy. Maybe, maybe I'll do a Arrested Development rewatch since nobody will give me their goddamn Netflix, Netflix password to watch a damn Tiger Master or whatever it is. You can have mine, dude. I don't want yours. I'll hook, you, I'll hook you up. I don't want yours. I want I want somebody else that that has to work for it to give to me. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh we're we're creeping up. Now uh, ah, we got another fifteen minutes or so. Okay. No, Austin, I haven't watched goddamn Deadwood yet. I, 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 re, I restarted it, but, you know, some of us are working. <laughs> I've, I've never seen, I still have not seen a single episode of Deadwood. Oh, it's terrific. Austin, Austin was kind of enough to loan me his uh, DVD sets uh, eight months ago. Yeah. Eight, eight months ago, and I will, I, will, I will watch them. I assure you. I did. I did recently start rewatching it. Deadwood is great because they say a lot of cussings. No. I understand uh, the word cock is featured predominantly in the Deadwood show. Cock sucker. It, cock sucker, yes. Well, you can't see that. Here, oh, you can't see that either. A friend of mine sent me a, uh, a it's a steampunk band. <laughs> a steampunk band. <laughs> Adam admired the woodwork in your apartment. Look at that. Yeah. Adam, if you ever went to my apartment on uh, 21st and Broadway when I was living over there, uh, when I first moved back to Paducah, both buildings are designed exactly the same. They have that same uh, setup. We're, we're Todd, Todd lives across the street over there. I just, I just dox Todd. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> And of course, that's 21st and Broadway in Metropolis. <laughs> There's not 21 streets in Metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have lovely, uh, lovely woodwork in this apartment and um, lovely cabinets. Man. This social, Look at that. This social distancing is killing me because I miss... I miss Staring at them cabinets, I know that much. Yep, uh, we've re we've recorded a few episodes of Ingenious Bastards here in my apartment. Oh yeah, it's definitely been the wettest episodes. God damn, the drunkest fucking shit shows. I do want to point out really quickly, um, or the the, the gallery of uh, people that watched this night have, have been really shitty at uh, giving us uh, questions and things to talk about. And uh, I'd, I'd rather just not even have friends if, if that's how you guys are going to be. This is upsetting. I mean, I mean, look look at what we brought you. Legends of the Goddamn Fall. Legends of the Dole. Hansel and Gretter, Gretel, Gretter. <laughs> Jeremy Gretter. That's his new name, Jeremy Gretter. <laughs> Witch Hunters. And he's pissed off about child support. What a fucking... Um, uh, shit. Uh, there. What do you think he was looking at with those binoculars? Probably his fucking kids because they don't want to have anything to do with him. There ain't no way. Okay, Chris has a question. And he says that he loves us, so that's, of course. Yeah, we, we love you, Chris. Chris, by the way, like, last time you uh, you, you chimed in here, you said, uh, you, you talked about how you were in Paducah, 
uh, the week before shit went down and, and you shook a, a shit ton of hands in Paducah and you were, you were afraid about that. And my, uh, my response to that is I came to Louisville four days later and you and I went to a goddamn punk rock show that was <laughs> packed to the fucking gills full of sweaty, gross people. <laughs> so I'm, I'm way more in danger. Because Louisville got their first case that day, damn it. Well, we're we're waiting anxiously for that question. It's it's one question. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have time for this question. I just want you. I just everybody know that uh, the Huckabees are dog killers. And Bob Dole is still alive, but uh, you know I, I, I see that. That is a, a, a really a blessing because his life can't be good. He's, he's rolling around in diapers, and I think he's earned that. Because he's a piece of shit. You know what? I think he should run for president again. I really do. I mean, like, he fucking might as well. Joel Deal, what is our quest? Content quest, I guess. We're, we're, we're trying to be influencers. Yes. yes. <laughs> and to see if we can get... Creative... Creative Influencers, Inc. Mm. See, this way I feel like he's sitting on my shoulder. Aww. Oh, popped corn. Okay, we got a question here in the question box. It's like you got a little pat ball up there on your shoulder, Corey. Okay, uh, Adam asks, uh, worst Brad Pitt film? Mm. Legends of the Fall. <laughs> worst Brad Pitt film? Jesus. I IMDb pulled up. This is going to be hard. I have to come up with it off the top of my head. It's going to be difficult. What was... Uh... Uh, Brad Pitt does a lot of good fucking movies. I know, right? Let me get let me get Bob Bob up on my shoulder. He's the angel in my in my right ear. Oh, worst uh, worst Brad Pitt film. Meet Joe Black. It's even it like is it? It's not that bad though. Like there. Rebecca Matting agrees with me. She would. Look, it's not even that bad. Like, because it's got the best, like, he gets run over by car in the beginning of it, and it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but is it good? No, it's not good at all. But, like, I'm just saying, like, compared to, like, the, the Rennerography, like, Brad Pitt's doing pretty damn good. God, I'm... Oh, I love Brad. I love Brad Pitt. He's terrific. I think he's amazing. He's terrific, and he's not. He's not the greatest actor. His, I mean, his best role to me was Once Upon, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That was that was him, like better than I've ever seen him. I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm digging old Brad Pitt. I fucking love it. Yeah, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, fantastic. My, it was my favorite movie of the year last year. God damn! When I'm trying to think of what else, I mean, I mean, he was obviously in some shit when he was young, but he was pretty badass right from the get go. He, I mean, True Romance, that little bit role he had, he was great. Oh, uh, Floyd! <laughs> yeah, that's a great little. Uh, he's fucking amazing in that. Yeah, quit talking shit about Brad Pitt, or I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna bring back the the Bob Dole picks. See, Jeremy Renner is a poor man's Brad Pitt. Is what that fucking sack of shit is. And whatever you do, do not buy that goddamn new album because it ain't the medicine. It ain't gonna... <sighs> can't rub it on the road. I would rather listen to that fucking song we talked about the other night that Bono wrote for the coronavirus or the Bon Jovi coronavirus song before I listen to Jeremy Renner's The Medicine. 
again, I want to I, I want to reiterate, like, do not get curious and and listen to any of Jeremy Renner's goddamn music because it because I did, and I'm, I'm sure Todd did too. We're martyrs for you, so you don't have to hear that. It it is it is beyond bad. Look, you're just gonna have to trust us on this, okay? Yeah, Todd. I think our time is we're creeping towards an hour here. So, I've been having night terrors ever since I listened to the Jeremy Renner album. I've been ha I've been having nocturnal remissions. I don't even know what that means. The only thing that Jeremy Renner's music is good for is if you're having sex and you don't want to come, just like listen to one of his songs in your head. Don't think about baseball. Don't think about any of that stuff. Think about Jeremy Renner making music when you're fucking, and it's almost like tantric sex. I hate him. I hate him. I hate everything about his face. Oh, Austin said World War, World, World War Z. That is probably, that might be the worst Brad Pitt movie. It's not good. Real bad. At one point, David Fincher was going to make a sequel for some reason. Why in God's day? Yeah. Thank God that fell through. That's upsetting. Are we out of time, Corey? We're, we're creeping on that, so we need we need we need to say our our uh, we need to do the end of uh, sound of music. <laughs> well, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. You're welcome, Adam. Ooh. And by the way. The coming advice, Adam. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're we're gonna leave. Uh, we're gonna leave you, people. Maybe maybe we'll be back tomorrow. I don't know. Probably. Or the night after. Yeah. Uh, you guys all all be incredibly safe. Don't be an asshole, Joel. Move out of Tennessee immediately. Because there's no way you're gonna survive there. And do not buy the Jeremy Renner album. That won't save you either. Nope. All, all, you guys be you guys be very careful. And uh, remember Bob Dole. He's sitting somewhere with his pants up under his arms. His belt is touching his fucking armpits, and he's eating some popcorn. Popped corn. The fluffed corn. <laughs>